we go to Scotland every year for your birthday, don't we? And we usually always go away somewhere for my birthday in August. You, you can go whenever you want, so you don't have to plan it so much in advance, really. But there's often times when we're just like on a Friday, like fancy going away this weekend, and we do. I'm James. I'm Sarah, and this is our self-converted VW T5 camper van. It's a long wheelbase, and it's two litre, 105 brake horsepower. So it took us about two months to get the van, didn't we? Because we were quite picky in what we wanted. So one of the things we did want was air conditioning so we could go abroad in it. It had to be a long wheelbase for the extra space. And we wanted one that was fairly new to try and avoid some of the teething problems with mechanics and things like that, didn't we? Yeah. So about two months to find one and then 23 days to convert it with some quite late nights, weren't it? <laughs> we had a deadline for Christmas so we could go to Scotland. And yeah, we just made sure we'd stuck to that deadline to do it. But I think it's just control as well over a self-build. You can design and plan everything ex exactly how you want it. We'd, having a van previously, we found out a lot of the floors and the layout floors and stuff. So we, we put a lot of research into this van um, and it would just be able to get the layout we wanted and everything we wanted in it, how we wanted it. And it just saved us quite a lot of money as well, self-converting it. It's quite a nice achievement as well to be yeah. able to say when people look at it, we did it ourselves rather than we just took it to some garage to do it for us kind of thing. Yeah. It's an enjoyable process most of the time as most well, isn't time, it? Yeah. <laughs> so this is our kitchen area here. So we've got double gas burners under this one where we cook all of our food. And then under this side, we've got our sink and tap. We've got a, just a cold water tap because we didn't want the boiler to take up too much space for hot water. We've also keep our kettle in there so it's out of the way and doesn't rattle around. And then in this one here, we keep all of our pots and pans. It's a lift up cupboard. So we've got our pans. We've got also our favorite gadget, which is the Ridge Monkey, which is a lifesaver for us because we can cut pizza in the van, which is brilliant. Then we also keep our kitchen roll and other little bits and bobs in there. Here's our shelves that we just throw knickknacks in. So we've got our carbon monoxide monitor up there, spare batteries for it, then remotes and cables for the TV there. Inside this cupboard, we've got all our cutlery. So we keep our knives, forks, spoons, um, plastic bags for sandwiches and any other utensils that we tend to use. Down here is where we store additional water bottles. So for when we want to have a shower, we fill these bottles up in streams. We've also got our pump in the back there, which is what our sink uses there. And we also fill up our water tank, which is under the van from under here too. Then our fridge is a Cruise 49 fridge, which is really nice inside. It's got areas to stack bottles here and here. And inside as well, there's also a freezer, which is nice because then you can preserve food a little bit longer on longer trips. I started about just over eight years ago. I just started like hill walking uh, and I bought a DSLR with my first ever camera just to you know record memories and moments of when I was out in the hills, I intentionally just wanted it to take pictures for when I was older, for when I was like 60 or something, I wanted to look back on these days and remember and buy, and it quickly grew from there. Uh, it got a lot more serious quite quickly, really. I'm quite an outdoorsy person anyway, so I've done a lot of outdoor walking, and I thought, well, combining my walking and being outside with something I already do, it's actually how we met, we yeah. <laughs> through, through uh, mutual friends who were landscape photographers. One of our most recent additions to the van is this uh, bike rack we've just bought. That's uh, hopefully going to allow us to take our uh, mountain bikes out with us when we go away camping. Uh, if we just have a look inside. Uh, one of the things we did on this van is we've put some rear windows in. We also store our table on the rear, which is pretty cool. Uh, just keeps it out of the way, especially when you're traveling, it's not going to be knocking around or anything like that. We've got uh, double wardrobes at the back, so we can get in there and we can get in here as well. So, literally, we put all our clothes down here. Is just another cupboard, you can only get in this one at the back, but usually tripods and uh, boots and all that go in that kind of one. And then we've got a big cupboard here under the bed. Uh, we keep all our camera bags and stuff and shower and everything under that side of the bed. So uh, the stuff we don't need to get to quite as much, really. 
And then we've just got the bench seat at the back as well, which we use for a little bit of extra storage when we want to. James is the doer, I'm the planner, really. So uh, I did all the logo designs and the embroidery pattern designs. And so more the creative stuff with me and then the hands-on stuff. I'm not a practical person. I don't, you know, I've never been a DIY or anything like that. It was just a learn on the job kind of thing. But yeah. I think that's one of the things we wanted to get across, weren't you? That you don't need to be a skilled person to convert your own van. We had no experience at all before we started ours. Just plenty of research and the Volkswagen community is awesome. Like everyone wants to chip in and give you some advice and it's just it was really helpful, weren't it, for us? Yeah, I think we estimate around about four thousand pounds worth of labour, so it's that's a lot of a lot of uh, money to save. I think one of the other things that would benefit from it is if something goes wrong in the van, we can fix it again without having to take it back to a garage to, and pay again to, for it to be fixed. So it's about knowing your van as well. Usually if something does go wrong, you know where to look rather than going, oh, it could be this, it could be that. If something went wrong with a diesel heat, we know exactly where it's located. We know how to get to it. And even if we do have to take it to a garage to actually have it physically fixed, we can go in with a knowledge of what it is rather than them trying to fob us off with something that it might or might not be. We sourced the units from Evo Designs, um, so they came on a pallet, they like a flat pack kit of uh, units which are really good. Got a lot of the smaller materials like the suede and the flooring and stuff from various suppliers on eBay. Uh, split charge kit from a guy called Simply Split Charge. We've got the windows from Kira Vans, uh, carpeting all from Mega Van Mats. Yeah, it's all basically everything pretty much apart from the little bits and bobs from all from internet suppliers just get the little bits and bobs from like local things like b and q and stuff like the foil insulations from aldi uh, and the bo plastic bottle insulation that's from b and q aldi's a really good place to get foil insulation from it's so much cheaper than anywhere else so if you're going to self-convert wait for aldi to get it in <laughs> so moving over to here this is our control panel which is our power comes from our leisure batteries under the driver's seat so here we've got our front and back lights and then we've also got a light under here which is nice to illuminate our cooking area which is also touch sensitive as well which is quite handy. This one here powers our fridge and then the two at the back power our USB sockets for charging phones and camera gear and also a 12 volt as well for the TV. So moving on over here we've got our diesel heater in the van. This is where the control unit is so we got it a timer so we can set it to come on in the morning then turn off after about half an hour and then in the evening when we go to bed we can have it turned on for half an hour as well so this is where the control box for it is and then we've actually got the vent for the diesel heater which is just behind the passenger seat which is a nice airflow to bring it through the van and then up towards the back where we're usually sitting it is a lot of hard work and it's a lot of stress and you know but at the end of it you, you just got something to be proud of really really proud of you you can just it's like a mini home and you built it yourself and i really like that aspect of it and it's not really difficult i mean it was daunting to us i mean cutting the windows in we were so scared of cutting them in because knowing how expensive that panel was to replace but actually just taking a little bit of time to research it i mean we we had literally no experience before converting a van we didn't convert a house, we didn't really decorate a house, we did nothing of the sort that was sort of DIY and we just dived in and it's actually a lot easier. It's just do your research basically um, once you've figured out what you need to do it's relatively simple. Thanks for watching, subscribe now and if you like the video give us a thumbs up.